I've been to the National Festival of Railway Modelling at the NEC November 24. So stay tuned and all will be revealed. Good morning everyone and welcome back to Piccadilly Model Railways. Now I'm sitting on a very cold and wet Northampton station. I'm on my way to the new BRM show at the NEC. So that should be good. And uh, wondering how it's going to be different from the former Wally, um, if at all. I know there's some new features there, uh, but it'll be interesting to see what's there, what's the same, what's different, that type of thing. Anyway, we we'll look forward to meet you and uh, I'll see you there. This layout is next door. I think it's automatic, so I think the things are going to start moving in a few seconds time, so I'll come back to you in a minute. The gate in the bottom right hand corner. Nice and smooth. I have to say, I think this layout is absolutely gorgeous. I'm speaking. Um, can I can I put you on camera as well? Can I can I point the camera at you? No. I was just talking to the gentlemen who've built this layout, and uh, uh, they'd rather not be on camera. And I respect that, and it works absolutely beautifully. There we go. We come into a lovely stop there. Thanks very much, chaps. I appreciate it. This one is Blue Bell, Blue Ball Summit, and there's a DMU coming over the viaduct in the distance. So we'll just let that come along. There seems to be something coming the other way too. If you watch the left hand side, 33. So this layout is. Stetland Mill, and it's really two layouts in one. We've got a branch line that goes from here down to the fiddle yard and then you've got a main line that comes from here and it goes to the back scene over there and it was it was originally designed um, as a cross-country route in West Sussex but it never was built so this is what we think it would have looked like so you've got electric trains running on the main line and you've got steam trains and diesel electric running along the branch I think it's delightful I really do it's lovely So the DMU is now moving off into the fiddle yard there. And all the multiple units, they're all kit built, all scratch built. Because in this scale, unfortunately, you've got to make it all. Scale, there's nothing you can buy ready to run, so you've got to make it all. But that's the fun of it. So this layout is Weaver Hill. A charity show, just watch trains go around. A couple of 90s there. That's the concept. Oh, another 90 coming the other way.
and there's the previous 90 on tankers which I'll just let you guys do and I'll move on. Around the show, I've just discovered this stand here with these absolutely amazing photographs. And to my right here, I've got the artist himself. If you'd like to introduce yourself. Hello there, I'm Renford Thatcher. I'm the artist that's painted these paintings. I hope you enjoy them. Thank you. So what I'll do now is I'll have a quick scan through and I'll let you see all this wonderful work that he's done. <laughs> Right, so if there's anybody interested in any of these paintings, I've just spoke to the gallery owner. Yeah. These are the details. Yeah. Okay, so please get in touch with, with him if you would like to buy or even visit the gallery. Thanks. This is an enormous be... layout. This is from nearlycompetent.com. Um, I'm told the layout doesn't actually have a name. It's called LMM Modular. And hopefully there will be a train... That one stopped. I know this is a. I've forgotten who's made it now, but it's. It's, it's a KR models, models. That's it. It's a KR yeah. models. And then TMC are very kindly graffitied up our coaches for us. Lovely. With accurately themed graffiti. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I like their own their own um, advert on the side of the characters that's as well. <laughs> it's got to be done, isn't it? I did actually include this clip for personal reference of the, the changes of the TPE um, 800 class, but I thought I'd just include it um, so that you can really see it as. Revolution trains now, so you can see all the uh, class 180s, Avalanti. And I didn't realise that they've even done one in the new EMR, EMR. I think they've been removed from EMR now. I think we've just got the 360s. And that's uh, the 66, I believe that is. And some more multiple units. Double O gauge, so some W1A or IA wagons. Well, it looks like they're doing the Avalanche in double O as well, and the 175s. And I've seen this shunt, but I'm not totally sure what that is. Uh, just looking at a veil of ride on. carrying wagons there and some more at the bottom. This is a bit of an unusual one but I've just come to KMS Models and um, I'm totally caught by the way they've done the lighting so I went to tell the chap and he said could you give us a review so um, this is it I'm just showing the, the stand as it is at the show he's given me a, a leaflet which I'll show you in a minute and uh, there we go but isn't that lovely lighting it's so dramatic and the way it sort of lights up the boxes as well I think it's just brilliant this one is Minerals you can just about see the sign just there quite a famous layout it's been it's been around for a while so we'll just wait for something to come through the stage So the quite familiar 66s, as I'm sure you've all seen, and the 31s, which have not been long released. And there, 
is the 1989, which I might even be tempted by at some point. Depends on how the finances are when it comes out. But then the 50s. When I've got a Hornby 50, you never know. You just never know. Another 66. And then you've got the 60s down here. I did look at the uh, Cavalet 60 at the Get Show, and I tell you what, there's not a lot in it between these two. It's, you know, you couldn't say go for this or go for the other because they're as good as each other in many, many ways. All right, come around the other side now. So we've got these bale hacks, I think that's what they're called. The snow plows. There's a pannier tanks. More 37s. And that one there, 418, I've got that one in the original uh, large logo livery. And this is the new Austerities. Um, I think that's the Austerities anyway. Um, saw those on the video the other day. I might be tempted by one of those, you never know. It depends on the timing of it. And also the 55s, Deltics. And I think they're called, I think Andrew Barkley, I'm not sure. Coaches, Mark Twos, 31 there, test train. Um, so I don't, I'm not sure, is that, is that Irish Railways this one? I'm not sure. Moving across, wagons this time. So some box vans. I think this is, well, it's a 37 there, so they think this is an Irish locomotive here. This layout is Bear Creek Junction, and if you notice at the back there, there is something moving. Don't ask me what that is, I'll be honest, I have no idea. I'm not an American train expert. Well, it's crawling very well, I'll give you that. This is called Nice Layout. So uh, nice to see an old Midland Pullman running there. If you stay tuned, I've got some information about my Midland Pullman, which I'll share later. That looks like a baby delta to me. Yeah, I think it's class 23, baby delta. You never got to the This one is the Royal Albert Bridge. And yes, it's actually there. And what a beauty that is. This is Foxbury. Um, it's actually only about three foot long. So I'd say what about a foot wide by about three foot long. Oh, can I video you? Can I? No, okay then. If you come close to the camera. Yes, 14 inches wide. Yep. By the whole layout is six foot long. Yeah. Um, three foot six is senior. Three foot six. I'm far off then, am I? <laughs> so what's next for us? Oh, Rabcar. I'll 
I've got your hand, is that all right? Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> I tell you, the one thing I do like about this um, is the way the back scene just sort of merges in with the scenery and you can actually imagine that there's miles and miles of landscape going on into the distance there. Beautiful. And as that rail car disappears. Well, I'm at home now, and as you can hear, I'm still squeaking and croaking my way through the video. <laughs> I'm sure that will improve at some point, but I've just got back from the National Festival of Railway Modelling, and what a brilliant day it has been. Um, I've met some amazing people. Um, people come up to me and said, you've inspired me to do this. And I think, well, that's absolutely fantastic. That's that's exactly what the whole, what being on YouTube and doing the hobby is all about. We want people to, to get into the hobby and extend the life of the hobby, you know. But um, anyway, I'll, I'll mention a few people as I go along. And first up, I just want to mention Paris and Paul from Smallwood Junction. Lovely, lovely, lovely people. Paris gave me this and I will probably hang it somewhere in the house and um, I think it's some kind of lucky charm um, but it's it's delightful and I think Paris you've put this together yourself haven't you so I think there's there's a piece of silver in there you said and there's a penny um, obviously a butterfly is a button to be honest and there's some um, a flower a daisy maybe I'm not sure but delightful. So thank you very, very much, Paris. I really appreciate it. And it was such a lovely conversation with you both as well. So really lovely to meet you. So I, I also met some other YouTubers as well. And Peter Jackson from Cheadle Heath. So absolutely lovely guy. I mean, all the people are, everyone. And Simon Trains. It's really lovely to meet you. And we had a lovely long conversation at uh, Jenny Kirk's meetup. And I think, oh yes, there was an artist there, Leanne Ellis Art. So she was painting some absolutely gorgeous um, images. And so she gave me this card. And so you can see that, it's absolutely beautiful, isn't it? And the one thing I said to her, and she kind of repeated it back to me as um, the, the reason for doing it. I love the fact that you've got the river going off into the distance through the bridge which then leads you to think, what's behind? What's behind this viaduct here? What's going on up here? And it kind of leads to uh, storytelling as well, which I absolutely love. And she said to me, that was one of the main reasons why she does the art in the way she does. So lovely to meet you, Leanne. And I also met John Lynch. I won't show the rest of the car because it's got his personal address and details on that, so I don't think that would be very fair. But lovely chap, man. It's absolutely fantastic to meet you. So did I buy anything? Well, I certainly didn't buy this, <laughs> the, the, um, the wallet. I bought these for school, and they, I thought, well, they're going to come in brilliantly for going to the show for varying things. But as you can see in there, there are some wheels. So you can see the details there, and surprisingly, they're not that far away from me, to be honest. So in the deepest, darkest depths of Northamptonshire. And they managed to sell me some wheels, some N-gauge wheels. Now, I've got two types. And the second type I, I'll explain in a minute. But these are metal wheels with a metal axle. And there is a piece of um, insulation plastic running around I think it's one side. I'm not sure you can see in there, but it goes around. It inserts into the wheel and then around the axle itself. So it's a kind of like a washer type arrangement, like a polo mint, if you like. But so there's those feeling a little bit all forlorn that I weren't going to get any of these. And I thought I'll just go and ask the question at West Hill Wacken Works just in case they had any resin printed wheels which I could then slot in, which were totally insulated and I could fit into that 185. And I was telling Chris Barr all about it. He said, hang on a minute, I'll have a look what I've got. And I couldn't believe it. He he found these, which was absolutely amazing. So massive shout out to Chris Bauer. Thank you so, so much. I really appreciate that. Thank you. Next up, 
Um, I've decided to go for this. This is a Lima one. Um, I'll be honest with you. I, I just can't see the point in spending 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 pounds on one coach. Um, you know, that's me. Um, I'd rather buy something a bit cheaper and do things to it if I need to or run it as it is. Whatever, whatever, whatever. Actually, I think these are quite good models as they are, to be honest. Um, this was, you can see, £12. You know, I, what can what can you argue about that? I mean, it's, I mean, it might not be in perfect condition. It might need a bit of a clean, um, you know, might even need a bit of a touch-up in places. But I'm really happy with that. Sadly, the only thing is, this is the only one I could find. Um, there were loads of others for a lot more than that, obviously, and there were some new ones as well, obviously, but, you know, I think I'll go for these, and if it takes me four or five years to find a rate, then it takes me four or five years, but I can run this with my Rail Adventure power cars, and you can literally shove anything in the middle of them, and um, kind of get away with it, really. <laughs> Um, and you know me, I'm I'm not really bothered by whether it's prototypical or not. I just, if I like it, I'll run it as it is because it's my enjoyment of the layout. Now that's that's part of the um, fun of it. So, you know, you've got to do this hobby in the way you want to. And I think that's the most important bit. Anyway, next right. up, on to the slightly bigger stuff now. Now, as you know, I've been trying to make this 185 and having huge issues with the running side of things um, because I had the, um, that bogey was causing a problem, the insulated bogey. And so, like I said, massive thanks to Chris for that. Uh, but you can see in front, I've been to um, DCC Concepts and they're stocking this range of AE models. And I met the, I met the chap who's um, in charge of it as well. So what I've got here is two more six pin decoders and I didn't realise but they come with a fly lead with a socket on there as you can see just there to which you can plug in a stay alive. So that is going to be absolutely invaluable and you can see there just like the Hornby ones there's a plug there. I think you can use these with the Hornby ones as well from what I'm hearing. Um, don't quote me on that. Maybe talk to DCC Concepts first before you do that. But I've got a feeling you can with that. So there's two sets there. And I've also bought, this is not so easy to see, but if I can get this open without it all falling apart. These are more six pin sockets. Um, it's, oh, it's tight, but you can just about make them out in there, can't you? There's three in there. And so... Um, that will be absolutely brilliant, which gives me more scope to move on to the um, other models that I plan to do. Now, on the um, now staying on the stay alive theme, um, you probably realise I've got um, some old uh, Backman six pin decoders, very very good decoders. I'm not going to lie to you; they are amazing decoders, but obviously they're not compatible. With this system unless I start cutting them up and I don't really want to do that with these because I'd rather just keep it plug and play so John at you choose as you can see has sold me this um, system for stay alive so there's effectively there's two sets here as you can count it I think this is some kind of controller connection circuit stay alive connection circuit so this has to be connected to the decoder and then the decoder to these. Now, I think the idea being is that you create a bank of them. So two, three, four, however many you want. And I think he was saying to me, you put them all together on a piece of double sided tape and then you solder a wire down each side. So I think it's all plus together, all negative together, I think. Um, but he has assured me that there are some instructions in here, <laughs> which I will read intently. And we've also said that um, if I don't get it, I'll phone him up and he'll talk me through it or even video call me to help me out with it. So it's just that I've never done this before, but this will help with the older decoders that I've got. So anyway, that's that. 
Well, I say big stuff. Yes, this is big for me. And I've given the impression there's a lot of things coming. Well, actually, this is it. But this is massive for me because you can appreciate this has not been cheap and it's it's gone into the couple of hundreds. Um, but I did want to do this. So obviously you can see this is sound. And so there are two Next 18 decoders. And you probably have, if you haven't realised yet, this is for the HST, which is conveniently sitting right by me. So this is due to get sound. It's been sitting in the box for the last two months. And there is a table with like a shelf underneath um, next to me. So it's been sitting on the lower shelf for the, for the last couple of months since I had it. But I'm hoping to get that sorted out by, say, Christmas. Um, it's not going to be a difficult fit, I don't think. Um, I think it's quite an easy install. I mean, but I think I'll save the reveal of it till Christmas and um, make a bit of a fuss about it then, I think, and have it running out on Piccadilly and maybe do like a Christmas Day type uh, running with it. Right, I nearly forgot this. Um, this was from John at YouTube's, and it is a mug. Now, I deliberately not opened it before, so I'll open it here on cam. <laughs> but, oh, that's nice, isn't it? So, you, I think if you spend over a hundred pounds, which I clearly, clearly have <laughs> with the sound decoders, then he's giving you a free mug. So look at that. That's beautiful. So high mech there. Um, can't quite make out what that is. Is that a 9F? I'm not sure. It's quite foreshortened, isn't it? Um, I don't know what that is. I'll be honest. I'm not so hot on my steamers. But that's obviously a Western. Class 66. I've got that one. The Hatton's version. Double O gauge. I think that's a large prairie. Um I've seen those before, but I don't know what it is. Um, but be honest, and obviously clearly an 08. But that's gorgeous. Yeah, so once again, John, thank you so, so much for that. That is about it. So, I mean, I've spent, for me, an absolute fortune. I mean, I know many people go there and they spend many, many hundreds, maybe even into the thousands. But I haven't got that much to spend. And to, for me to spend couple of hundred pound there on this and you can see what I've got um I have stretched myself a little bit here and perhaps I've been a little bit naughty to myself but you know sometimes I think you've just got to um you know we only live once and as long as you're not putting yourself into you know desperate situations I don't think there's a problem with that you just have to make your decisions yourself don't you it's like I have to make my own decisions but anyway I hope you've enjoyed the video and lots of running clips there. Um, I didn't, didn't get to see everything. Uh, there were loads and loads of layouts there. I didn't get to see um, all the traders. But, you know, that's that's one of the joys of going to a show like this, isn't it? But anyway, I hope you've enjoyed it and I will catch you very, very soon here on Piccadilly Model Railways. Take care of yourself and bye for now.